Jane Lo and I'm at the Red Alpha office here at uh, around the Fort Canning area here in Singapore and with me today I'm very pleased and very privileged to have uh, Dean Gaffin who is the uh, founder as well as the director of Red Alpha to join us today to talk about training, upskilling, reskilling, capacity building, capabilities building all in the area of cyber security. So thank you so much for your time today Dean. Sure, happy. Yeah. Happy to host you here in our office. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah. So, Dean, um, I understand that you are a founder of Red Alpha. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, talk about skill set gaps in cybersecurity and there's a massive shortage of skills. But what is your motivation behind setting up Red Alpha? Tell us about it. So, I think the motivation that we had was to, uh, generally to help people improve and go into and find a job in the cybersecurity space. We found out there is a huge gap within the cybersecurity industry where there is a huge need for professional, skilled professional in certain areas. And on the other hand, there was a lot of unemployment rate, mainly during COVID period. And we were able to take and transform a talented individual who didn't choose the path of IT professional mm -hmm. into cybersecurity and we were fortunate enough to gain good traction over that, uh, those areas. And of course you have a program called Alpha Specialist Training Program, ASTP, right? Correct. That, uh, that cater to this uh, meet professional uh, to gain entry into the cybersecurity field. So we'll talk about the program later. But in the meantime, if I could get your thoughts about the evolution of the training landscape, right? Because of course, we know that the cybersecurity landscape, the threat landscape is constantly evolving. It's very complex, right? Um, we're talking about, you know, from 20 years ago, where you have a fixed parameter to one that is dynamic, uh, nation state actors to, you know, ransom as a service kind of uh, malware. IT type of uh, cybersecurity evolving into OT and merging or converging to OT. So there's a lot of uh, uh, changes happening on the cybersecurity side. And of course, that means that there's uh, evolution on the cyber defense side. But how does that impact training? So I think uh, uh, our main focus is first help our trainees understand how the attacker point of view looks like. And this mm -hmm. is how we specifically built our training for. So we start with building them and giving them strong foundation about IT uh, in general. Then we will jump to the understanding how the attacker think, how the advanced attacks looks like. For example, bypassing EDR, evading SIM solution, all those kind of things. And then eventually they will cover, of course, more the defensive area. Because we believe that in order to be a good defender, you must understand how the attacker will think and how it will compromise your network. Yeah, so talking about how to understand how the attackers think, right? So we're talking about skill sets that potentially means that a, a sort of a, a understanding of psychology in order to understand the motivations. And then you, of course, you also talk about, uh, touch on technical skill set. So there's quite a range of different types of skill sets. And of course, uh, when it comes to uh, gathering threat intelligence and the ability to detect anomalies, then you talk about, you know, uh, ability to have an analytical mindset as well and ability to absorb huge information data sets, right? And then shift up the uh, ones that are uh, suspicious looking. And then, so there's quite a different types of range uh, of skill sets. So what you're saying is that uh, you provide the trainees with foundation in technical skill set, and then you also provide them with different types of soft skill set as well. Yes, yes. And, and I think on top of that, what is what we saw that is lacking with some professionals that we interview even to hire for Dart or for Red Alpha was the fact that they didn't truly really understand how the network built. And then they do and they do incident response, but they never build exchange server in their life. They don't un okay. truly understand active directory. Mm -hmm. This is for us, we believe that the main focus should also be from starting building strong foundation f at the candidate side. So they need to how to, they need to know how to do troubleshooting properly. Okay. They need to understand networking they need to understand po they, they need to know how to write code of course okay. and understand deeply operation system and then they could uh, later on be a good cyber security professional when we add on the later the more i would say intermediate skills such as a network pt red team uh, malware analysis incident response handling etc okay so tell us about your program right so y you have 
if I understand right, uh, around four to six months boot camp? Four months, yes. Oh, four months. So that is where you um, introduce the technical set of uh, uh, syllabus to the trainees. And then you have the three-year sort of internship type of pro um, attachment program to it. So tell us about the program. How can candidates, potential candidates who are interested in cybersecurity, how can they apply? What kind of uh, candidates are you looking for? How do they progress you know, throughout the program? Okay, so I think first, uh, let's start with how to apply. You just go to our uh, website, mm -hmm. they will get some uh, home assignment. Whoever passed the home assignment okay. will come to take an aptitude test. Okay. And in the aptitude test, we check their potential. So we don't care what they study before that. Some of our uh, graduates have O level. They mm -hmm. don't even uh, graduate mm -hmm. a, a, a diploma or anything like it. Okay. Some are coming from ITE schools. Uh, we have people that uh, were working from the F and B industry. Oh, right. Of course, we oh. also have accountant and lawyer, etc. Hmm, but we, we also have people that didn't had the opportunity to choose uh, the IT as their major. Uh, and and once they apply, we believe that we should take all the risks. So we don't sell the training uh, for for money, the, the the Red Alpha training. So we pay them salary. Whoever pass our selection test. We'll hire him, mm -hmm. we'll pay him salary, uh, we'll train him for free. We'll also buy them the, the excellent certificates such as SANS, uh, GCIH, and Offensive Security OSCP, so they can get also industry recognition. And then we'll place them uh, uh, within our partner organization for three years. Why three years? Because first, the organization is hiring someone that is a bit junior, even though that he has a pretty good training. And so we have to be something like correlation that they will stay at least three years with the organization and help them also groom and tap them so the organization will help them uh, be more successful. So uh, if I may ask, um, if it's public information, of course, so the homework that um, candidates have to, you know, submit. Zero homework. Zero homework. <laughs> Zero homework. Right, okay, so, but you say that when they apply, there's some... Uh, okay, so um, the, the thing is, the assignment, they just need to read 30 pages of PDF. Whoever read the 30 pages will understand exactly how to solve the challenge and will pass oh, right, it. okay. So the home assignment is pretty straightforward. Okay, and if I also may ask, so you are now into the your fourth intake or the fifth intake i think now we are taking for the six or oh, sorry, seven apologies. already because there is astp astp there are a few problems so what happened is that companies saw uh, the candidate that we were able to deliver were very excited and happy and say oh we need coaches for ourselves can you make us we need a, we need to hire another 20 people and we really like the red alpha candidates mm. and then we started to do cohorts that are dedicated for those companies solely oh, right. okay so for uh, a single year can you, can you tell us when is the next admission or how many times a year or? so we are aiming to do in singapore we are aiming to do four or five a year five, four or five a year so when is the next one Every two months, I think oh, the next one months. is when? August. Oh, so the oh, next, next month. month. Oh, next month. Okay, so they can go online. Uh, yeah, just submit uh, and then. Submit and then. Submit, home assignment, uh, aptitude assessment, mm -hmm. a workshop assessment, interview, and there. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. So um, the next intake is August. So that means uh, when does the how long does the assessment take before and the interview? It depends. Before? If if they can book slots, usually it takes less than a week. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. And so, what? How many candidates do you normally, you know, accept per so, per intake? So we take about up to twenty. So oh, far, up to twenty. Okay. Up to twenty per cohort. So far, we were able to find about twelve each one. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. So, um, is it the and of course, if it's public information, how many do you normally see in terms of applications? I think our passing score, whoever passed the, the home assignment is about one to 10, will get accepted around that. Oh, so okay. it's, it's quite high. Right, okay. And of course you are one of the judges. 
No, not anymore. I oh, not anymore. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not judges. I mean, okay, assess, assess, whoever assess. passed to the interview phase, one out of two will pass the interview phase. So it's quite high. Right, okay. Yeah, it sounds quite tough. Okay, so um, of course, and you ha bring with you also a range of international experience, okay. given that you have been in the industry for what? Close to now 20 years, if I may say so. Uh, uh, yeah. Not just in Singapore, but of course in your home country, Israel yes. as well. So yeah. I was uh, hoping that you are able to share, you know, when we talk about Israel, right, and cybersecurity, many people say, wow, you know, it's one of the strongest, if not oh, the strongest in the world in terms of uh, training cybersecurity talent. So what are the sort of uh, lessons we can take from Israel in terms of training cybersecurity so, talent? So, so I think one of the things that we took in, in Red Alpha was that we look about the IDI uh, approach, the Israel Defense Force Intelligence, mm. uh, where they get a large pool of people in the age of 18, right? So some of them are super bright evaluate them, assess them, and then in the shortest time, make them to be operational in cybersecurity. And then after five years in the industry, in, in the army, they became the best in the world, mm -hmm. as you said, as Israel yes, is right. good. And the reason for that is because the army knows for, for choosing people with the right aptitude. Mm. I think the main game here is how to choose the candidate with the right aptitude mm -hmm. for cybersecurity and for IT professional. Sometimes, and this is something unique phenomena that we saw here in Singapore, that people are coming to Red Alpha trying to accept and they fail during the process. And then they go and they pay for boot camp a lot of money, other boot camps from other vendors, and then they come back and try to accept again for Red Alpha. But unfortunately, they still cannot pass the bar. And sometimes they complain and say, well, we spent so money on this and that mm -hmm. course. We took it for six months and you still didn't accept it. And they say, yes, because we look about potential, right? So if you have potential, then maybe uh, you can, uh, uh, that may, it might be suitable for Red Alpha, but it might be you have to take a different path in order to fulfill it. Uh, so we don't sell promises in that sense. So you talk about aptitude, um, and of course you have the aptitude test as well, you mentioned earlier. So what is this aptitude that um, you, you are referring to? So I, I think what we are looking for is uh, technical cap abilities. Also, mm -hmm. we, we look about how to teach them something and we are seeing how they reply, mm -hmm. what kind of answer, what is, how they think creatively, those kinds of areas that we are looking for. Right, okay. Um, so and we don't care what they study, zero. So aptitude, like you say, is very important. It's about the potential ability to solve problems, uh, having a creative uh, thinking mindset, I guess, right? Correct. And so it's not just purely, uh, well, looking at some binary files and be able to detect malware. It's a bit also thinking about behind, perhaps the motivation behind the creation of the malware. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, but not in the assessment phase, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, also understanding why things look like that and also see how they can, uh, for example, if we teach them something, how they reply on it, how they can understand it. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, their passion for the exactly. field as well, right? Um, so for aspiring cybersecurity professionals who are interested in gaining entry into the field, uh, not just students, but also mid-career professionals, what is your advice to them then? First, I think they should understand IT. Okay. Proper IT at the beginning. And once they will be able to understand that, then everything else will go smoothly. They will understand attack surface better. They will understand uh, how the attacker think, why he was able to do this kind of lateral movement and not the other way around. Mm -hmm. And once they will have this, everything else will be easier for them. So when you say understand the corporate IT, so basically a basic, I guess, a technical understanding of how a network is hooked up. Yes, exactly. Right. Network, so cloud infrastructure. Okay. Uh, understanding the operational system, okay. understanding uh, uh, the different system, how they work. Okay, right. And for those candidates who want to apply to your program, is this something that they need to have as well? No, no. We okay. will teach them. We are okay. covering it from zero. So we are checking how they will success in the course. Right. Okay. So, and of course, I also understand throughout their training programs, they will be coming back on a sort of a on a exactly. few months so basis every, to get updated. On every 
by right on every six months they should come back for one week mm. on advanced reskilling so we are offering them one week uh, of course free of charge on different topics it could be web intelligence it could be advanced right. reverse engineering it could be malware analysis it could be threat hunting mm. uh, many different domains so can you just also, of course also if the information is public uh, can you just tell us you know all the graduates that have come through your program are they all still in cybersecurity? Yes, yeah, so far oh, I think uh, all of them oh, wow, placed. Well done. Okay. All of them placed, and I think that also means that we are keeping good people outside of the program, right? Because you should have a certain threshold of at least, I would say, up to five percent of of people that we cannot place them. But the fact that we are able to place all of our candidates, uh, I think that's that's mean that there are still good people who haven't tried and didn't apply it to the program. Mm -hmm. or Wonderful. Oh, that's really a testament to how strong and robust the pro training program is. So, right. So any last words for our audience, Dean, before we wrap up the podcast? I I'm, I'm encourage them to come and try to take the Red Alpha assessment and hope mm -hmm. to see them with one of our graduates. And the website is, of course, redalpha.com.sg. Correct, or okay. redalphacyber.com if they're international. All right, okay, cool. Okay, thank you so much, Adin, for you. your time today. Have a lovely day. Thank you.